Oh, that, that's, <laughs> that's nothing at all. Pay no attention to that, guys. Today on Dirt Gear TV, we're going to be tearing this little engine off this push mower here, and we're going to convert this from a vertical shaft engine into a horizontal shaft engine. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Dirt Gear TV. If you haven't been here before, check out our video library. Got some really cool stuff in there. Today we're going to be converting this vertical shaft engine into a horizontal shaft engine. Rick, why in the world would I want to convert my lawnmower engine into a horizontal shaft engine? Well, there's actually a myriad of reasons. Sheer boredom. Your mother-in-law lent you a lawnmower. You may have already figured out how many licks it takes to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Roll pop. You finish Netflix, some world epidemic quarantine going on, and may find yourself in a situation where you've got nothing better to do with your time than to tear engines off of perfectly good working lawnmowers and completely reconfigure them for no reason whatsoever. I've torn apart far better working appliances for much less of a reason myself. Regardless of your reason, this is the project today, so let's dig into this thing. So this is her here, my happy little Toro free lawnmower. Oh, no, it's Troy Bill. Sorry, this is Herb's brother, Troy. So Troy here was going to a junk heap in one of my neighbor's piles, and I took it upon myself to relieve them of this burden of free lawnmower. Now, the thing didn't work. Now, normally things don't work after I get them, but in this case, this one didn't work before I got it. Believe it or not, this was actually the only reason why this mower wasn't working. But nonetheless, we've acquired this free mower here, and we're going to repurpose this vertical shaft engine into something that's used horizontally. Alrighty, get rid of this fuel first. Uh, currently vertical shaft, we need to switch this over to horizontal shaft. So really stage one, I'm surprised we're not leaking oil yet. Stage one would be to remove this thing completely of its fluids. So down here is going to be what was our oil fill. The one thing that we're really going to need to change in this configuration is the way that the system is lubricated. When we go to a horizontal setup, it's going to be harder to get the oil to actually come up further into the engine. Oh man, it's getting dirtier than Long Neck's Instagram account. All right guys, so let's get to chopping. Remember, safety third. So that's what we're working with. This was like the little governor piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to weld this little bit onto that bolt, just like that. Okay guys, I just finished grinding this down. You can see I've done two things. I've ground down a lot of this little peg. I've ground down quite a bit. That's as much as I'm comfortable grinding down the peg so I don't cut through all the way through it. And then I just nip the end off of our little plunger here. You can see that clearance that we've got is very minimal. I mean, there's definitely clearance. Very little, but it's enough. For this next part, you're going to want to mix up some good old JB Weld. Now guys, what I would recommend for sealing up your oil port is you can go to Home Depot and Lowe's and you can get different sized rubber plugs, basically. These are like, uh, what do you call those little plugs that go into the bottom of boats? Little John boats to keep the stuff out. And this one here, I happen to have, is the exact right fit. All right guys, so next day we're still working on the uh, engine here. So now we're gonna do a little bit of work here to the other side of the case because the most important thing with this conversion is to make sure that these bushings for our camshaft, our main shaft, 
is all getting plenty of oil flow. There is a feed for this, but it's on the wrong side. It's on the bottom side. And we wanna create an oil feed, but on this top one here. I'm just gonna put a simple notch into that with a Dremel tool. The same thing that we did for the main crankshaft here, we want to do for the camshaft. The good news about this engine and the carburetor is this is going to be a really easy carburetor to just relocate because it's just got this one circular o-ring that it attaches to. Okay, so normally the carburetor just sits in this configuration right here, but we're obviously going to need to turn that to suit our horizontal shaft. We want to just twist this 90 degrees and remount it like that. See this little uh, guy? It needs to sit like that, so what I'm thinking is rather than notch out the metal, I'm gonna notch out the plastic on either side there. So that's gonna sit this way, and this will just slide down over there. Still got a little bit more notching left to do. So we got her drilled out. So here's the finished product. This will sit in this configuration on the engine that way. This will slip over the top of it there, and that whole thing will drop right on the engine. And now, our carburetor, boop, drop right on there. That is now a horizontal shaft configuration carburetor. Oh, I know what we forgot to talk about, guys. We forgot to cover the kill switch. The way that the kill switches work on these is the coil basically grounds itself out. So, this little wire here, that guy just tucks under this, and it has a spring-loaded mechanism that basically has a shoe on it that breaks the flywheel and it grounds out the coil. For this oil fill, here's all I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna drill this out. Sometimes, guys, the simplest solution is the best solution. So I've got all the parts cleaned off. I think we're ready for reassembly. Um, you can use assembly lube. I'm just gonna use some high quality synthetic oil on our parts. Okay, so we've got both of our return springs functioning, throttle, choke. Uh, what do you say we get some oil in this thing? We'll give it a test run. If you have an oil syringe, that's probably going to be your best method because you can actually get it down there into that little oil port. So that was about 12 ounces. So I'm happy with that. All right guys, so I think we're ready for a test fire. I've never done this before, so I'm not really sure what to expect. Uh, engine might blow up, engine might run beautifully, I don't really know, I've never tried this before. But there's only one way to find out. So let's give this thing a test fire. I wanna know who it was 
then invented these so-called safety pour spouts. We got ourselves a running engine, boys and girls. So obviously my top concern is not necessarily that it's not running great because we've had this thing in pieces. There's probably a lot of oil and stuff that got into the exhaust. Overall, it's running pretty good. It accelerates when I hit the gas. Initially, we don't want to burn this engine out, um, but eventually we can take a little bit of oil out of there and really see how we can get this thing to rev up. And that'll come in really handy for what this is actually built for, the project that you guys will see this engine going into, which hopefully you should see the start of in the next episode. So hit that bell notification if you haven't already so you guys don't miss out on that project. I think you're really not going to want to miss this one. I'm excited to share it with you as soon as I can. I'm Rick with Dirt Gear TV and I'll see you next time.